I think a lot of people actually think you're Canadian, and we they have do. to set the record straight that you were born and raised in the States, mm -hmm. moved to Vancouver, went to art school there, yes. and launched your career with the new pornographers. Tell us how the Vancouver art scene influenced your music. Um, I think it's, it's just a really nice place if you're a musician or an artist, especially coming from the States, because in Canada, you know, even the Canadian government recognizes young people who are making art or music. You know, you can get grants to go on tour or to go to school or to, even to make videos. So, you know, it's a very validating experience. And, you know, the population of Canada is very small, so it's very easy to meet people across the entire country. In fact, it's very, it seems like a very cozy music scene and it's just it's just very validating especially coming from a place like Tacoma Washington you know in the United States where you know when I was in grade school um, Ronald Reagan cut art and music very heavily from school so you know it, it's kind of looked at more as a pipe dream where I came from whereas you know when I started going to school in Canada you know it seemed like a very vibrant thing and and there was uh, you know encouragement from every angle so I want to talk about uh, Fox Confessor brings the flood I'm not even gonna try to figure out what the title means <laughs> and what is nice about the album is that it does allow the listener to have an imagination because it is a little ambiguous mm -hmm. and I wonder when you're putting together these songs do you have a very clear idea of what it is about or oh, is it no. mysterious for yourself too <laughs> Well, it starts out with ideas, and um, I never usually know what the common threads of the record are till about two thirds of the way through. You know, some things you don't know till you have it mixed and you put it in the right order. But you know, there, there are I have a lot of interests, and uh, you know, I'm always researching things or reading things or watching documentaries or doing whatever. So, you know, part way through the record, I realized, you know. Uh, Fairy tales had played a big part, you know, just reading a lot about things like that or weird stories about the questioning of morality. And, and I realized that the Eastern European fairy tales were the most prevalent in what was influencing it because they were very uh, dark and funny and not overly moral. And I, I think I really was drawn to them too because they have a lot of animal imagery, which I really appreciate. I think I think a lot about, you know, the void between you know, where humans see themselves and where they see nature, which seems like a very lonely space in between, so. We were talking about animals and obviously the fox features prominently mm -hmm. uh, in the album and also in the title. Is there something about that particular animal that speaks to you? I thought the fox confessor character in, in literature is interesting. He's kind of an observer character who won't give out the answers. So he, he kind of has a lot in common with you know, Native American folklore, but then he also has a lot in common with, like, Faust, you know, like, the demon who is in charge of granting Faust his wishes, who won't tell Faust the answers, because he tells Faust his brain is too small mm -hmm. <laughs> to understand them, so I always thought that was kind of great. I want to also talk about the structure of the songs, because you played a little bit with that, and when you were talking about the song Hold On, you said you had a Freddie Mercury moment, and I'd like to know what you mean by that. Well... It, it's F Freddie Mercury used to do this thing on the early Queen records where he would um, think of the greatest. I mean, I'm not saying I had this moment because I'm not Freddie Mercury, but he would he would come up with this hook, and he would know that it was the greatest hook in the world. But he would only do it one time in the song, about two thirds of the way through, and you just go, "Oh, <laughs> it hurt me!" That hook, and then so you'd have yeah. to listen to it over and over and over again. So Which, you, you know, don't, you maybe, don't, I don't know in if you In other words, you don't give the hook three, four times. Exactly. You just... It's one time. Wait, beg for and it. And then you're out. And I, I found that that had the most impact on me. So I, I realized I was doing it after a while, and I couldn't go on doing it without admitting that I'm sure it came from listening to Queen Records. <laughs> Now you've been uh, very candid about uh, how your upbringing was difficult for you and how you left home at 15. Mm -hmm. What did art and um, find this creative outlet do for you? I mean, how did it help you almost have a lifeline? I think it was distracting. I think it was a good distraction and um, I didn't really find a lot of stimulus in school and I was very bored and uh, I think it just it kind of occupied my mind. It gave me a nice thing that I could count on, you know, art and music. 
because if you focused on what was around you sometimes it was a little too depressing <laughs> yeah. and you got involved with the punk scene but then as you matured I guess you got somehow disenchanted with it what was it about that scene that wasn't fulfilling anymore it wasn't the scene it was just um, I think the music that was coming through at a, in a very small window of time I don't mean you know I mean there was really great bands but for the most part we would get really <laughs> bad really macho uh, punk rock bands um, that were just all guys. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it was, <laughs> if they had been really good bands, it would have been one thing, but it was all, like the big thing at the time was to be really political, you right. know? So and, it was posturing uh, more than... Yeah, it was posturing and it was recycling of other people's political ideas, so it was actually pretty laughable. But everybody was so overly serious about it. You know, me and a lot of my friends, we just kind of felt like, there's nobody really representing us, you know. So we all, because of our economic situation, ended up turning to kind of thrift store records. So we'd find old country records and gospel records. And we found that that is where the passion that we were missing resided, was in those things. So we got heavily into any kind of music we could find. Like, the more bizarre, the better. You know, lady preachers, it didn't matter. We, we liked it all. And, and it really broadened our horizons. and taught us a lot about compassion and you know it, it was a definite reaction to what was going on in our area in music at the time and you know that whole area spawned the whole riot girl movement and stuff too so it makes sense to me what would you like to see happen to this album it's just basically out and you know it's being mm. embraced now so would you hope that it would become a huge success or would you like to maintain more of a kind of well I mean artistic. obviously it'd be nice to get more people to hear the music and have more people come to shows um, I, I'm a little I, I don't really know what happens after that you know I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm thrilled to be doing what I'm doing I mean I'm on tour right now and lots of people have been coming out and that people have been very supportive and obviously we've gotten a lot more press and we've gotten to do some TV like today which is very nice so I don't know I'm, I'm pretty happy where it's going I mean it's been a slow build the, the reason that we're here now is just because we've been touring for so many years and and that's what we do me and the fellas so we're, we're happy to be playing and so that's great thank you very much for stopping by you're welcome thanks for having me and once again here's Nico Case with hold on hold on Much too 